Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another Lair Belair. In this project, we're taking a look at this e-ink display project. So the goal for this project was to kind of have a display that's upright in this position. Uh, and the viewing angle is something that I wanted to play with for a while now where I can adjust it parametrically. So let's take a look at how this works. I set up a user parameter called angle. It doesn't have a unit to it. And the goal here is to kind of have a number that I can adjust. So the angle right now is 65. Let's change it to something a little bit smaller, like 60. If you look at, if you notice the design actually changed a lot. Let me drop this back to like 45. We're going to try to break the design here. And we have a little bit of error in the timeline as well. At this point, it's at a 45 degree. And there's lots of little features and things that we should take a look at. So when doing a parametric design, it's always important to check your work and make sure that none of the features in the timeline are breaking. In this case here, I am breaking some things. And we're going to address them uh, when we create the initial setup, because uh, I think I need to kind of change that approach in this particular design. But if we take off the, uh, the faceplate here, you can see there's some standoffs that are floating. So there are some things that you got to make sure and double check um, if your constraints are set up properly. Uh, in this case, uh, I don't have a good uh, constraint set up for this uh, profile. So what we're going to do is look at the inside here and see that there is another component in there. This is the main microcontroller. That's the Feather M4, I believe. Or maybe it's the Wi-Fi Feather M0. <laughs> and then this is the, uh, the display, the e-ink display, the 2.13, as it says there. Uh, so there we go. We're going to fix those problems. Um, and for now, I want to show you guys how I set this up and probably how to set it up better than the way this is set up. So let's play around with the user parameter again. I'm going to set this back to 65. So I thought that was a good viewing angle. And you see that it, it even elongated back here. And it's kind of important because the wiring has to come through here. And if you have uh, like a screw, you need to be able to screw into it there, uh, into those built-in standoffs. Um, so there's a lot of considerations there. Uh, but for the most part, it's not breaking that bad, which is surprising to me. Uh, the, this is really the main thing that I need to fix. So let's try to fix it. So I got a blank document. And uh, just to start with a blank document, you definitely want to save it. Because then um, if you want to import external components, uh, then uh, you won't be able to. Because you need to save the document. Let's make a new component. I'll call it parts because I'm going to shove my parts in there. Uh, so this is kind of like going to be a fictional, no, it's going to be a real project. Let's do a real one. <laughs> Let's go to parts. Uh, it's going to be the display. No, no, no. It's going to be the radio bonnet. And I need a pi zero. So I'm going to bring that in too. Uh, I like to just bring it in. I'm going to move it later. And by move it, I mean use a joint to, uh, to fix it to a very specific spot that has user parameter that's driven with user parameters how about that we'll do that i'm looking for the raspberry pi i forgot where i put it <laughs> i'm gonna have to search for it raspberry pi pi zero w this is a really good model that i found on grabcad shout out to the person in the link in the description of this video uh of that because i'm gonna definitely do that now uh here it is it's pi zero w 1.3. It has the proper dimensions for all the components, just about all the components that are important, or are going to be important in this design. So let's bring that in, going over here, parts, right click, insert into current design. There we go. And again, I don't care where it is because I'm going to move it later. So now that I have this, uh, I'm going to go back into the main parent and I'm going to create some sketches. They're going to be kind of be like a global thing. So I'm not going to make a new component for them. So I'm going to make sketch. The, this guy shows up, so I'm going to draw it here on this plane. This is going to be where the pi resides. So let's do something using a regular rectangle tool. Uh, let's put some numbers in. We do need something as a reference. So I forget what the measurements on the pi zero are, but let's just kind of fudge it. So I think it's like 30 by 50 or something like that. I like to just draw it away from the center because then I can apply some certain things to the center. So what I'll do is I'll grab this line and then I'll shift select uh, the center dot and then I'll just come up here and hit midpoint. Midpoint, and now it's snapped to the midpoint there. And that's kind of how I want this to be set up, <clears throat> right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the construction menu. I don't have to do it to the construction menu, but uh, let's not do that. Let's go to S sketch so it's much cooler that way. 
and uh, we're going to say angle. We get this plane at angle, and that's what we want. So I'm going to click on that. And we're just going to select the edge here of that first sketch, the one that's closest to, well, that's right on there, on the center. Click on that. And now we can adjust our, our degree here, right? And this is going to be our viewing angle. Now, Fusion has a negative value there, and that's kind of weird. But let's say I want 65, hit Enter. This is where I need to bring up my user parameter window. I need to create that user parameter. So remember, you need to make this uh, a no unit. Otherwise, I don't think it'll work. So I'll call it whatever. Maybe view angle. Camel case. I need an expression. What is it going to be? It's 65 right now. So let's do that. When I go into that feature in the timeline, I can just type it in, hopefully. But since it's a negative and, I'm, and I wrote a positive, I'll just put negative view angle, then that seems to work. OK. Let's test it out and make sure that it can change. 45, look at that 45 degree, excellent. And then 65. Another thing to know is that the, the angle is, this, the, the only reason this works is because uh, when I, I, the edge I selected is super important. You see that line right there? It's super important that that line is uh, kind of angle, is in the center of our main origin. Otherwise, this, some of the angles gets kind of screwy. So if I were to select, the actual origin of the main document, things get a little bit weirder, right? So I'll show you. Just it took me a minute to figure this out. So I'm going to select the the X plane here, and you can see that you can totally do that. You're like, well, why do you need a sketch? Well, this is why. When I bring up the other sketch, it's actually no longer in the center. It's offset. So if I start creating sketches on this work plane, the one that has the angle. Um, it's going to not be in the center anymore relative to this first sketch. So that is why we select this guy here. Now it's in the center. You can see by just viewing it that it's in the center. Again, if I select the axis instead, well, I'd have to hide the, uh, the sketch for a second. If I were to select that edge there on the actual axis, it is no longer symmetrical. It is, <laughs> it is offset somehow in some weird way too. Um, so yeah, let's not select that and select the actual sketch. All right, excellent. Now I can, now I can sketch on this and uh, kind of create another, basically the same uh, thing. I forget what the number was, like 30, 50 or something. Doesn't matter, we're going to change it later. Uh, and then I can apply, um, let's hide that sketch. I can apply uh, a midpoint constraint again, doing the same shift select, select the center, midpoint, done. Hit stop sketch. All right, so we have like our two kind of helper helper sketches here. And if we play with our user parameter, we can totally change it up, 45, 65, whatever. <clears throat> and if we wanted to do a, a parametric height and width, we could we could just apply it to those sketch dimensions that we set up, the 30, 50 here. We could totally do that. But right now, I don't think I need to, um, but I will later. Uh, so let's get these components now in the right spots. So the main one I want to focus on is, of course, the radio bonnet one. So what I'll do is I'll hit up uh, joints here. <laughs> I got my joint. Component one, let's go ahead and select. I like to hold down Command or, or Control on PC, and that way I get an idea of where the center is. You'll get kind of like this. Uh, wait, is it this way? Maybe it's this way. Hover over it. Um... Yeah, this can be difficult. Look how many spots there are on this PCB. It's almost too many, right? I'm kind of just hovering somewhere in this empty space, and I can see just barely ghosted out is that center origin. So I'm going to click on that, and hopefully that is the origin. And then for component number two, if I just roll over uh, this, you can see that there's a little white dot that sits up there. And if I kind of creep on it, it locks there. Click on that. And you'll notice that you know the components kind of stay in place. I haven't hit OK yet. Fusion will apply that joint to all these components after I hit OK. But for now, get an idea of where it is. You can apply uh, alignment offsets here to any of the axes. Uh, and you can even change the motion type. Right now, it's rigid. It's not moving anywhere. So let's hit Stop. You see how those components went back there? Excellent. So now we have this. Uh, it looks. Is it? I think it's offset a little bit. We can go back in there and change the origin point. We can figure this out real quick by just clicking one of these dots and then clicking on this edge, for example. And you get that minimum distance is 8.5, yada, yada. The other side should have the exact same. That's a 5, 4, 6. And this is, nope, 5. Yeah, it's completely different. <clears throat> so it's not exactly in the center. 
So we could go back into that joint and um, kind of try to get that just by selecting the first component. Maybe I need to go, I know there's a better way to do this, a way to show and reveal. Maybe we do it from the back. There's got to be a, maybe that's the center point. Oh, that's the center point, I think, right there. Well, we can uh, flip it if we need, as I did there. I had to flip it. But that looks correct now. That looks like it's spot on. We can do that measurement thing again where we compare our edges. You know, when Fusion... Oh, no, it didn't. It's back. Excellent. All right, so let's, <laughs> so let's select those two edges. 7.5 over here. It should be 7.5. It is. Excellent. So... Hey, that's one way to do it. We could have also went into this component, broken the link, and then hid those components. All these little guys, we could have hid them by just hitting that light bulb. That way we have more clarity, probably have more selection surface area. Anyway, this is parametric. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> Let's go open up the parametric window and then change this to a different view size, maybe 72. You see it's changing. Isn't that awesome? I can keep adding um, user parameter values Let's say I wanted to have it go up a little bit. Well, I could just go into the joint and then modify an offset. And so I want it to go up on the y-axis, or I guess it's the z-axis. Oh, no, it's the y-axis. Going on the y-axis, I want 10. I can make this parametric and say uh, angle uh, divided by 4. You know, you can do that. And that'll move it up a little bit because I kind of need it to. And then we can apply another joint to the, uh, the, the pi 0, which is hiding over here. So let's do that. Hit up that joint. Hold down Command or Control to get that center. That was a lot easier to select because there's less components on it. That sets it there. And then I can apply even more offsets over here. I kind of want it to be a little bit back. So let's go ahead and say View Angle divided by 4, I guess. How does that look? That doesn't look too bad. Did it, did it apply that? Yeah. OK, cool. So there you go. So now I can you know, draw my uh, profile for my case and extrude it out long ways, as that's actually how I built the last project I showed you in the beginning. But let's play around with the user parameters again to see how this works. So going back to 65, you can see how they start coming closer together. That right there probably wouldn't, no, that might still work. Yeah, so this is working for, for the most part, and this is kind of the main setup uh, that you want to have and now we can actually start making our enclosure uh, so this was a bit of an experiment too just to see uh, how to get the positions right because to me I feel like using uh, joints is the best way to get a parametrically driven design because as you've seen um, it's adaptive it can move around and when you start um, hammering away uh, at at features at extrusions and adding chamfers and things um, and you're building it on top of something that isn't adjustable, then it's locked there. And it's going to be a lot more work to break that out and free it. So that's why I think joints and user parameters, they go so well to, with each other, especially when you have external project, external uh, parts like this, or rather just you know actual components. It looks like these were built in here, but they were not. They were external and just broke the link. Um, but working with external components is super, super handy, especially uh, when you want to make a parametric design like this one. So there you go. Uh, I hope you guys learned something. Let me know if you have any awesome tips as well that will help me out and everyone else reading the comments. Thank you, guys. I will talk to you in the next one. But until then, remember to make a great day.